Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Raines. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look for AZ Adopt Podcast. All right, on today's episode of Birth Mother Matters and Adoption, I just want to uh, kind of go over some things that we've gone over in the past. Some of them we haven't talked about in a while, and I thought maybe it'd be nice to retouch on them. But also, mostly, I just want to say some of the things that either I didn't realize or didn't completely realize about adoption and what we've been talking about for the last years. And this has kind of crystallized a lot of my my views on this and shown a light on a lot of things. I mean, I've always thought of birth mothers as heroes for what they do, but it really, this podcast has brought that home to where I actually have talked to birth mothers and I've heard stories from them and some of the hardships they go through and what they are doing when they place a child for adoption. It is just something that so many people don't realize. And I don't think I even fully realized how important this is, not just for them, but for the child, for the adopting family, just everybody involved. I mean, it is a blessing that can't be overstated. So the heroism of the birth mothers has been something that's really solidified, in my opinion, over the last almost two years now. We've done this for 171 episodes. This is the 171st episode. So I just, I thought that had to be highlighted. Yeah, I think that hearing you say that and looking back, I think you you brought up something that never, that just now I had my own realization of, it really is a generational blessing because you're not just blessing, you know, the adoptee and the adoptive parents, Mm -hmm. but the future generations that will come as well. Right. And And you're a prime example of that. You're one of the second generations and, and how your family has been raised has been in large part because of the adoption that you were part of as a child. A hundred percent. I absolutely agree with you. And I think at the time that my, my birth mother placed me for adoption, I mean, granted she was 16 years old, but she had no real understanding of what an amazing thing that she was doing, you know, back in the seventies, that this wasn't talked about like it is today. And so the simple fact that, you know, she made this selfless choice Mm -hmm. and unfortunately is no longer here um, to, to see, you know, the continued rewards and accomplishments and everything else that comes with the choice that she made. I think that it is, yeah, I I would say um, that, that I'm an example, but I think there are thousands and thousands and thousands of examples just like me that are, so lucky and blessed. And and, and I don't really like to use the word lucky. We've talked about that in, um, in other podcasts, but I definitely think that it it is a blessing and it's a blessing in so many ways. And that actually brings up something else that I don't think I fully realized before, but this podcast again, solidified what I now know. And it's the drastic change that has happened in adoption over the last even 
30, 40, 50 years that most of them back, you know, when I was a kid, I knew a few, I had a few friends who were adopted, a couple of them, and they knew nothing about their birth mother, their, you know, their circumstances, or they never shared it with me. And now with the more open adoption and the direction that that's going, I think it's such a wonderful thing for these kids, for society in general, for everybody, for the birth mother and the adoptive family to build that bond with each other as well. And I'm just blown away by how much it's changed in a positive way. And I pray that it keeps going in that direction. Yeah, that's funny that you say that, that when you were growing up that, you know, you knew of a few people that were adopted. Mm hmm. Um, I also knew one or two and, and it wasn't somebody that was a classmate or a neighbor on the street. It would be, you know, maybe one of my mom's friends, friends, daughter, sister, you know, some, <laughs> and if I was ever introduced to them, it almost felt like I was looking inside a cage at the zoo at somebody else. Like it was so foreign and yet the connection that I would have with that individual would be undeniable because right. again, early on in the seventies, it, it was much more of, you know, a smaller group. There were many adoptions, but they weren't talked about and they weren't celebrated like they are today. And they weren't publicized like they are today. You know, one thing I, I remember <laughs> and at the time, you know, I was horrified, but I get it. You know, sometimes in the moment, things seem really almost just mind boggling and you can't wrap your brain around something. And then later on, when you really think about it and process it, you have a chance to go back and, and realize where somebody was coming from. Mm -hmm. So when I went and met my birth mother for the first time, she had a party and she wanted to invite all of her family members that were in the area to come and meet me. That was a little daunting for me. Um <laughs> especially because some of them hadn't known that she had placed a baby for adoption. Right. And so when they came to this, you know, I, I tried to be as social as I could. Um, I, I hit a little bit, you know, went to a couple bathroom breaks and, and so forth. And one of my relatives, and I won't say who, because just in case you're listening, um, <laughs> had said, wow, we're, you know, this is so unbelievable. This is so exciting. Can you stand on the coffee table so we can just look at you? That's right. You did tell me about that. Yeah. And I remember thinking, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not get on the coffee table. That was the last thing that I was going to do. Right. And so it was one of those moments that, you know, it's, it's funny looking back on it and, and I get it. I mean, when you didn't know that somebody existed and they come into your world and they're biologically related to you, you do want to look at the similarities and differences between you and them. And you know, you want to look at the mother and the child and see, you know, what looks the same. And they wanted to do that. And I wasn't going to have any part of that. I wasn't getting on the coffee table and, you know, twirling around. That mm -hmm. wasn't happening. Um, but <laughs> I was so taken back by it. I, I remember thinking, is he serious? Like, <laughs> really? I also think, too, that, you know, in, in those moments that people who may not have had knowledge about the adoption and, you know, they're faced now with another family member that they haven't had a chance to grow up with and know about and have shared experiences with. I think that it is, it is normal. At the time it was awkward for me. They do kind of stare at you and they do wonder in their head, like what their life would have been like, had you been, you know, grown up together. And, you know, I know my brothers had said that to me a lot. Like, I, I wonder what it would have been like. And one of my brothers said, I would have been awful had you dated, you know, I wouldn't have been a, a good little brother if you'd been dating a boy, cause that would have been a nightmare. And, you know, right. just kind of those things. So it's kind of in those aspects, I think it's a little bittersweet for them. But on the other hand, you're able to bring blessings back to the family. And that's one of the biggest gifts of open adoption. I didn't have an open adoption. But now that open adoption is so prevalent and common and is more normalized every year, I think that those experiences that we missed having closed adoptions are not going to be missed because we're able to have open adoptions. Another thing that I uh, don't think we've touched on in quite some time, and it just kind of came back to me, and I thought, boy, we really need to talk about the You Before Me campaign 
that uh, you started and what exactly is going on with that right now? The You Before Me campaign was really our goal, had the mission of elevating um, the appreciation and acknowledgement of birth mothers and, and their sacrifice in placing their child for adoption. And it was and is to celebrate adoption as a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, it is to bring awareness to what abortion really is and the aftermath of what women experience. And it's to bring truth, education, and knowledge. And I think that as we celebrate adoption and when people say, you know, oh my gosh, I'm experiencing an unplanned pregnancy in their head, they're thinking, what are my choices? For so many years and so many decades, it was, you know, do I have an abortion? And adoption wasn't really on the forefront of people's minds. And so the You Before Me movement has always had the goal of making it the alternative choice to parenting. And I think it's beautiful that how you've uh, approached it is that you kind of juxtapose the two quote unquote choices, because if you want to be pro-choice, I think this is the choice you would rather go with when you actually look at all the different things that go into this and the life of the child, how it can be benefited and your life in t- it can be benefited as well. And I also think that you uh, try and facilitate that with the Donna K. Evans Foundation, who we were just talking about Donna K. Evans, your birth mother. And you guys do a tremendous job of trying to help get these girls who are in bad situations a lot of times back on their feet. You're trying to get them educational materials so that they can get a GED or help them to find a job and get resume skills that will help them with that and interview skills. You'll even work with getting them clothes and and food and just the things that they need just as that little support to say, okay, I can move forward and I can move up. And again, so these two foundations that you've started outside of, you know, working for Building Arizona Families, I think have been just immensely impactful for these women and for our society. And I want our society to continue to go in this direction. I do, too. I think that a lot of times we as a society and as just people in general can be very good at pointing out the problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people can be very good problem identifiers, but being a solution, you know, finding solutions as a whole to combat those obstructions that come up in life. Mm -hmm. I think that if you just say to people, you know what, I know you're having an unplanned pregnancy. And so what are you going to do? Well, if you give them the means to do an adoption and then you show them the path that not only can you do an adoption, but in doing an adoption, you're doing an amazing thing for your baby, for an adoptive family, and even for yourself. And then take it a step further. Let's make it so that you can change your life path so that you can go in the direction that you've always wanted to go. You know, let's let's get you back on the right track so that you're not in the same spot that you were in before. I think that it's really important to, like I said, offer people solutions instead of just, you know, people have, have said to me, well, abortion is the easy answer. It's, it's, you know, a quick fix to a big problem. Mm -hmm. And what is so wrong about that on so many levels is it's not, there are, you know, not only is there, you know, the loss of a baby, but women, a lot of women who have had an abortion have, regrets and depression and there are significant effects afterwards that they weren't prepared for nor do they know might come that way with adoption you're looking at you know facilities like ours that offer counseling you know anytime if a woman places her baby for adoption and five years later she starts to struggle with her adoption choice and she wants to revisit it and get some help that's why we're there we're there to help support her we know that it's a lifelong commitment. We understand that everybody's going to have their ups and downs. And again, I think that being a problem solver and offering answers to questions that people may not even realize at the time that they have is really the way to better and further 
the adoption community. We have a goal and our goal has always been to build families and not only build families, but it is to really help women. You know, when I have interviewed women who are coming in for case manager positions or really any aspect of the agency, I I always say to them, a lot of times in a field like this, when you're working side by side with a pregnant woman who is placing her baby for adoption, there's nothing in the world like a woman helping another woman. And it's not that men can't do the same thing. Of course they can. But a man can't carry a child. A man can't um, give birth. A man, you know, doesn't know what it feels like to have, you know, a baby kick inside of him. And so it's different. And I think that to have that passion and that desire to really help women, for us to, you know, to have that empathy and understanding and caring when we do see somebody on the street that's pregnant and holding up a sign, you know, asking for help. I think it's important to recognize those people and not just drive by. I think it's important for them to have options and know that there are places that they can go. And not only can they help their baby and keep their baby from winding up in uh, foster care or in, you know, as a, a ward of the state, but that they too can get help. And that's really, you know, if you help the mother, you're helping the child. And if you're helping the mother and helping the child, it keeps going out. The concentric circles keep going out. You're helping society. You're helping the United States and you're helping the world. Right. And I think it it just boils down to the fact that, you know, all people matter and women are strong. You know, it's not an easy, Mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing to place a child for adoption. I haven't done it myself, but I've talked to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women that have, and you have to be brave and courageous. And I think we need to recognize and celebrate that. If you're pregnant and considering adoption, we are here for you and understand what you're going through. We've helped hundreds of women place their babies for adoption, and we want to help you as well. We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can reach us on our toll-free number at 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and help you get started on creating an Arizona adoption plan, or just give you more information. Check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by looking for AZ Adopt Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us. Birth Mother Matters and Adoption was written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me. Thanks go out to Grapes for letting us use their song, I Don't Know, as our theme song. Join us next time on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Rains, and we'll see you then.